I ask for 1,000 likes, you got me 2,000 likes. That means you will be getting the new secret build which you're seeing right now. But if you want that build video to be next video, <laughs> hit the like button for the algorithm. 1,000 more Bombot likes. And let's show you guys how to use the 6 9 now. Another beautiful day, GVO family. I asked for 1,000 likes and you guys went ahead and got 2,000 freaking likes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to properly use a 6-9 point guard. A lot of y'all don't know what you can do on these 6-9 builds. You just run to the rim. You just spin around with the left stick four or five times and hope the defender which doesn't know what you're doing because you don't even know what you're doing will make a mistake i'm gonna show you guys how to actually use a 6-9 with skill no matter how overpowered a 6-1 build is you have to know how to dribble you have to know how to shoot you have to know how to have iq when you're going against people that are actually good at the game on the big build i've seen some of the best players in the world lose to people that they shouldn't lose to with these big builds because it's so overpowered right I'm going to show you guys how to use a 6-9 point guard the proper way. The jump shot that you're seeing in this video and the dribble moves have already been released. First things first, these are the badges I run on my 6-9. Because you're a 6-9, you get limitless at tier 2. You get slithery at tier 1. On a build like this, you don't even need poster because you rarely ever miss dunk. These are the shooting badges I run. I have all the badges I need. To, to be honest, I mean, I really don't see a difference between gold and silver blinders anyways. Now, when it comes to playmaking, this is how I run mine. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to run a clamp breaker on your 6-9, which is okay. You don't need it. It just makes it more overpowered. Hyperdrive, if you don't know what hyperdrive does, it speeds up your basic one spins. So defense, mercy. This build is crazy on defense. All the goodies at tier two, legitimately. These two are, well, I'll say one, two, and three are tier three badges on a guard. Those are the badges I use. These are the attributes for those that are wondering. I got the three point sleeve on, so it makes it a 93. I've not maxed this build out because there's no need to max the build out anymore. Everything I have is at the perfect spot. I could put the steel up, but I get steels already right now. So why waste the DC? It's too easy to use a six, nine point guard, but the other build is just as easy, but it's more fun to use it. And I'll show you guys why next video. Just smack the like button. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes. I am not going to, I'm not going to make it easier for you guys. 1,000 likes. It helps the channel for the algorithm. And two, just because, man, it's, I'm going to get you the video in the best quality and in the best way possible. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss this build, all right? I like to practice on the J. Cole court as if I'm playing in the real game right a lot of times unless i'm badge grinding are they walking on air it doesn't even look like he's stepping on the court so i like to practice how i play <sighs> all right so as a six nine point guard the first thing you're going to want to be doing is you want to start dribbling let me show you i dropped a tutorial on how to do all these moves already i stop it right here after doing the luca asta i hit a couple tweens not just you be methodical with your moves. Don't be out here doing moves that you don't even know and just playing in a way that you don't even, you can't even repeat. Just trying to get a bucket sneakily, right? So what I do on a 6-9 is I always stop at midcourt, like right here, right? And I'll start my combos right here and I'm looking up to see if they're helping. Right now he's helping. That's a dot in the real world situation, right? In the real game, that's a dot. But to even make it a better dot, Boom, right there is when I'm gonna start dotting. Passing is so important in this game, you need to know where you're gonna pass at. Right around this ear is the perfect place to pass. Some defenders have perfected the illusion of baiting, but still, once you get better at reading the defense, it'll get better. But you don't wanna pass from in the paint because it's gonna give you a slower animation. Right around here will give you a perfect dot every time almost. I'm, before I even look for the bucket now, because people play me a certain way, they play YouTubers and streamers a certain way, they like to play extra, extra hard. Obviously, you're trying to beat your favorite streamer or YouTuber or just you hate them or something. You're trying to beat them, right? So you're going to play them differently than somebody else. So as a 6'9 point guard, I've already gotten used to. And this is why we've won so many games on this build is because I already know people are going to be helping. They're going to be double helping. So my first initiative after starting a combo is I see that they're helping. I'm already looking up. They're playing off a little bit. I got the 80 pass and I'm making that dot right there. I have to read the floor, all right? Obviously, you're gonna have to know how to dribble. You're gonna have to know how to shoot. 
assuming that you already practice enough and you already know how to do both of those well guess what now now that they stop helping now you have a field day right you start dribbling at half court he's helping see on a build like this you can just play vertical right you can just step back and a lot of times that shot is gonna be open with a 6'9 point guard, you can get away with shooting shots that you can't shoot on a smaller guard because it's going to get contested. This step back alone, even in the real game, you will see even later on in this video, that is open for me. Nine times out of 10, if they're playing below the three point line, it's going to be open. I'm telling you right now, start looking at these vertical shots because these are going to be your best friend as a big guard. I get a lot of threes like this. I promise you. You can do things on a 6-9 when, when, when it comes to the scoring. You can do things on a 6-9 point guard that you can't do on a small guard. Maybe if you're 6-4, yeah, you can get away with it. But if they have goal challenger, you're not going to be able to do that, right? So on a 6-9 point guard, you're able to play vertically. Like, you can run, you can run, you can fade, right? Or guess what? You see their double team right here? Watch this. Watch this again. Let me reset real quick all the way back here because they like double team. So... So look, watch this. I hit my move. I hit a step back because he's playing below the line and I shoot the ball, right? I get a lot of threes off by doing that, by watching the defender. Now you need to get comfortable with dribbling first, right? Now that we got the passing situation out of the way, what the heck? You need to get comfortable with dribbling in front of the defender because if you can't dribble in front of the defender, then that means you're not supposed to run point guard, right? Let me come back all the way because they're trying to double team me. All right, so when I'm dribbling in front of the defender and I see that the, the passing lane is not there, right? If I'm going to act like I'm going to dunk, I got the basic one back. And that's going to guarantee me a three. Now, if that three is not there, I already have the defender on their heels, right? They're probably halfway in stamina by now. So I'm going to have the dunk. Say right here, I'm dribbling and the dot's not there. I'm dribbling. The, he's guarding my three, right? And I'm just trying to find a way. I, obviously you can go left and right but i technically don't do this a lot on a six nine well guess what i'm gonna run and i'm gonna dunk because he's playing my three too high and that's gonna you just gotta take what the defender is giving you sometimes now there's gonna be times where you need to go ahead and bop somebody and get a bucket but i'm showing you guys how to play with skill right on a big build and guards we do take the easy slip sometimes or we do call back doors or we take the easy dunk because this is the type of year you have to do that you have to make adjustments right so while I'm dribbling, if I really want the three, I know I can run and fade, right? I know I can run and fade if I really want the three, but that's not what I'm doing most of the time on my six, nine point guard, right? I'm fading. Yeah, if I need a three, but I know if I need a three, I can get a, get a basic one in our step back. But he didn't help me fast enough right there. He didn't help. He didn't hedge fast enough. So I know the dunk's going to be there on a six, nine because you can take off from you, you. You can take off from Uganda. All right. It's, you can have a scorer's mentality on a 6-9, like a score first mentality. I'm a score first person, but that doesn't mean I'm not looking to see if the dot's there. That's the biggest thing this year is your IQ, all right? Obviously, you have to have good shooters in a corner, but your IQ is going to be important because this is, not the, this is not the 2K anymore, like 2K21, 2K22, when a guard like myself and a lot of my friends and a lot of YouTubers I know and run the show no matter what. if you triple team them double team them, it doesn't matter they're gonna get a bucket one way or another you don't have to pass the ball in those 2ks this 2k you have to pass that rock because i'm telling you if both corners collapse and they're using a 6-9 build or a taller the chances are you're not dunking on all three of them now it might happen a few times out of none but if they're really good at it you're gonna freaking miss the dunk you're gonna get a turnover you're gonna be forced to pass so if they keep helping out, don't keep making it that easy for them to get these easy brain dead stops. Make the dot, make the dot, make the read, make them pay and make them say, you know what? I'm not leaving mine. I'm going to grade out. Be, be okay with giving up the tools. And with a six, nine point guard, you got to be okay with taking the tools, but also knowing that you need to take threes as well, because dunking every play, yeah, you'll go nine for nine, 18 points. But all the, all the next team needs is one or two threes and you're done for it regardless. All right, so now you have the badges. Assuming you know how to dribble and you have a jump shot. If you don't know the jump shot I'm using, I already dropped the video on it. And if you cannot dribble, click off the video, watch my last dribble tutorial. Now, first possession, I'm observing the floor. I'm looking for the dot. I don't have the shot. I could have dotted the corner right there. We're going to look at that again. This is where it's, it's important, especially with one stamina bar with silver handles for days. I could make that dot with an 80 pass, but... To me, it was a little bit too risky, but this dot, I'm not gonna make a mistake with. He is completely playing off. So what I tell y'all, I wanna score first, but I'm not dumb. 
I'm going to make sure that they pay anytime they want to be weird and triple team, right? I mean, it's not weird because it's real life basketball. You have to help. You have to hedge. But I make them pay. I make them pay because if I don't make them pay and I don't score, I don't get a bucket out of it and they go the other way with a turnover or, or a bad shot selection, it's going to be hell for me or my teammates, man. So this is the type of year 2K is forcing you to do better. Now, once again, I start at midcourt. I tried to create a dot. It wasn't there. So what I do, I come out there, reset with one adrenaline bar, and I know I got to score quickly. Silver hand is for days, and I get the three off. Remember I told you guys about that step back. Remember I told you about that. Freeze it right here. Look, that is completely wide open on a 6-9. There's no hands up. The jump is always going to be too late if there's no hands up. And boom, I get a three out of it. Oh, you think he can guard me now? Watch this. You think he can guard me, bruh? So remember I told you guys about that basic one, knowing how to play vertical and get the threes. I'm either getting a three off a basic one, or I'm getting a step back three, or I'm getting a fade three. On a 6-9, you have more options to get a three than a guard, which is really just fading unless you have the ultimate bop skill. And you look right here. I have the shot, but not only that, I have Caillou open in the left corner. For If I don't feel like I'm going to hit it, I got him open, and that's an easy green. And look right here. I'm having fun. Caillou is clearly open. I'm looking at that. I see, I see it already, but I'm going for a clip. Unfortunately, it was a rare occasion where I didn't make the shot. All right, this court felt funky, but I could have easily greened that, <laughs> especially with the 6-9 build. But I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I dot my boy in the corner because what I tell you guys, a lot of times they're too worried about the dunk because the dunk is so overpowered and they're going to play against you as how they play. All right. They think that you're going to play like them just trying to get to the rim. When I'm on my 6'9 point guard, I'm going for the three first. That is my mentality. Three first, whether it's me scoring the three first or my corner is going to score the three first. As long as we get threes, I'm happy, right? But guess what? Sometimes it's not there. So I have to be smart and take what they give me and not have no pride this year and take the easy two. You're going to have off games sometimes. You're not going to be perfect. I've already boosted my three-point percentage, two whole percentages. I'm almost at a 47 three-point percentage now using this method with a 6'9". On a guard, I was averaging around 43% for shooting fades, right? And it's very difficult to shoot on a small guard after dribbling the way I dribble. This game, they weren't giving me the three as much, but I was still getting open and shooting some threes, but I was breaking every single one of them. So I stopped being... You know, I stopped having an ego and decided, you know what? Because the game felt funky. We were all shooting lates and earlies this game. And we were like, you know what? We still got to get the W. So this is where you say, you know what? I'm going to take what they're giving me. But there's some possessions like this one where I decide I want to do too much. I had the dunk, but what do I do? I end up getting nothing out of it. I could have greened that <laughs> shot. That crap too. But I was trying to be greedy. We're up by one possession. When, I, when you're on a 6-9, you're up by one possession. Right. Yo. All you got to do is go score the ball any means necessary, and you're going to finish the game off. <laughs> Luckily, my boy Kyle got that strap. Ended up saving us right here. But I know how to get to that rim. Just because I don't rim run all game don't mean I can't do it at the highest level. But rim run is my bailout, not my number one go-to. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys you can do on a 6-9 point guard. Now, I want to show you guys a full gameplay uninterrupted of me using this 6-9, 9-3 overall, three-point specialist, point guard, 9-2-3 ball. And obviously the highest ball handle you can get gold quick first step i'm gonna show you guys how i play with it now look right there i didn't have the dot i thought i could dot it open because sometimes if you're a really good point guard you can create the dot you can force the defender to do something right and right there i tried to do it but it wasn't there so i took the back door cut and i got the easy two anyways now they're up all right these guys are a type of dudes that they can beat a really good guard if a guard is not going perfect Send it. once again what i tell you about that step back on a 6'9 point guard, get used to stepping back with this KD escape or whatever you use and shooting the ball. Because I'm telling you, a lot of times it's gonna be there. These dudes play in a way where they're gonna be so efficient that if you make one mistake on a guard, even a guard as skilled as me, right? You make one mistake, the game can be over, bro. It's way harder to shoot on a small guard than it is to shoot on a big build. I'm telling you guys that right now. I've already moved my three point percentage up by 5% legitimately five percent by playing on these big builds for just literally um like three weeks pretty much yeah three weeks right which is insane now back to what i was saying these these type of guys are gonna play so efficient that Send you want look at that <laughs> it's good to have shooters like that in your corner that's gonna be able to green some crazy stuff but still 
it's very important to play a specific way against guys like this that do a lot of IRL type stuff and they play the game in an IRL type way where they're going to do a lot of pats and a lot of cuts, a lot of shots off the, the, the pops, a lot of everything. They're decent shooters. It doesn't matter if they use meter. If they don't, it don't matter if they come out here with a backpack. This year, you can get dropped off by somebody with a backpack if you make too much mistakes. Right here was a rare occasion where I did not stop at midcourt and I do regret it because you saw what happened. This is why I like to stop at midcourt every single possession because i'm not letting the defenders dictate what i'm going to do and you see they get a three out of that i stop at midcourt because it enables me to read the floor i'm not getting forced to do anything because once a defender is forcing you to do something he already has you in his bag right here i missed the shot man i don't know why sometimes the shot will feel like that but on a big big build i really don't run into that anymore right uh, I that's it's rare to have a shot like that now i'm trying to get the three off and i've i could have shot that bro but i'm not gonna make Send the same it. mistake i'm gonna shoot it again because they're so worried about the rim run that they're willing to give up threes this is where you have to get in the lab to get some shots off all right and make sure you know your jump shot because i'm telling you this game you can look at look at the type of look at how they score versus how we score right they score so simple but it takes no skill to score the way they're scoring. Anybody can do it. I can show. I can give my wife the controller and she can play exactly like that in probably an hour. But to play like how you see me playing, as you see right there, I get another step back three. I'm telling you, start doing step backs on the big bills because if that hand is down, you can guarantee the shots open. And even if the hand is up and they don't have, they don't have gold challenger, you can guarantee the shot is greenable. Now, if they're in your grill and they jump, you're done for all right but you can still green some crazy stuff i've seen it already especially with a 92 three ball that is the highest green window in my opinion i have a 99 three ball i don't feel different than a 92 all right so i mean i gotta wait till y'all see my new build bro that that new build is freaking crazy i don't even use my 69 anymore right here i make the dot i don't know what they're doing they don't even know what they're doing boom look at the game now the game is pretty much done with because guess what i really i resort to the rim runs last all right because it's too easy. That's my bailout as a rim run. When I know it's already secured, we already know they're gonna be over guarding the, the, the dunk right now. So I'm able to have fun and try to get a three off at the end of the game or look for my teammates. Might be open, but guess what? Don't matter, that's ball game. Look how simple it, it is to play with a six nine point guard when you're actually trying to play dribble and get a three off like a real guard. If you're gonna, I, the guard got GB on his name. I don't know if he knows who we are. Shout out to the guard on the other team. The only place that small guards feel good when you're using it is Pro-Am and stage, all right? In the park, I I despise using my small guard because it's, it's just not even right, bro. When I'm out here with the big builds, <laughs> It's the easiest thing in the world, man. And when you're going against comp with it, it makes it more fun knowing you don't have any disadvantages. GVO family, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button for the algorithm. All right. If you guys show maximum love and support for this video, I got y'all with the secret build next video. When I say I've done some crazy stuff with this build that I have not done on any other build, it's freaking wild. And with the attributes I have on that build, you will be surprised. And you will start making your bills differently if you have the VC to spend. Trust me. All right. Anyways, big up on the self. Big up what I might do. We can't do nothing. Oh, G1, I don't know the thing already. Y'all, man, gaming. We're gone.